Where did my facial hair go? Well, it's hot out. If you haven't noticed from all my YouTube videos, so I shave. What's up, Finn fans? Today is a busy day. Mini camps were open to the media, and then they had press conferences with uh, the, the coordinators, with Matt Burke, um, Darren Rizzi, and Logan's, Loggins, I think is his name is. And then they met with the players, Tankersley, Grant, Parker. So I got a lot to get to. Um, again, if this again if this video goes long, I'll put the timestamp below so you can jump to what you you care about. But let's start with minicamp. So to start things off, these are the guys who did not practice today. You have Thomas Duarte, who had that great touchdown, 70-yard uh, touchdown catch yesterday from David Fales. He uh, hurt his shoulder, so he's just sitting the day out. Uh, Carew. Um, is not practicing today um, because of the knee. Jordan Lucas isn't practicing today, and Kiko Alonso isn't practicing today. He, they're just resting him up. Um, nothing serious. So with Kiko not playing, you get to see what these rookie linebackers can do. Um, and it was very, very hot in Miami today. So let's see how this offense did versus this defense. So in the wise words of me, and in the beginning of my videos for a very long time, let's get started. We start this Mamma Jamma off in mini camps. Frank Gore sidestepping Stephen Anthony. And Frank Gore is a timeless wonder, and I'm very happy he's on this team. Brock Osweiler with play action fake. Nice touchdown pass to Perry. Um, Brock Osweiler, what I'm hearing. Uh, with mini camps is and even in OTAs he's very inconsistent you'll hear that later on in the other descriptions at the beginning of mini camp today the offense is looking better so that's a plus then you got our boy David Fales with a nice touchdown pass to Bollage um, first snap first snap of the game boop, touchdown pass Bollage David Fales you're doing great backup quarterback our kicker Joseph had a horrible day today he missed a 39-yard field goal, but then he made a 41-yard field goal. Um, and then Robert Quinn friggin' lighting it up today, stops uh, Kenyon Drake in the backfield. Um, and then Gore with a nice run off the left, Sitton turned his defender around. Very happy they signed Sitton. If you remember back when I was talking about free agency, I wanted them to sign him. They did. Very happy about it. And then Scott, the wide receiver, got into a fight with uh, Fitzpatrick. It was not big, it was a little scuffle, and then it just ended. Um, Pittman flushes Brock Osweiler out of the pocket. Um, Malcolm Lewis with a nice 30-yard reception from Bryce Petty, uh, the best play so far at that point. And then Joseph, ugh, he had a very bad day. He missed three field goals in a row, a 32-yarder, a 44-yarder, and a 48-yarder. Not good, Joseph. If you want to compete with Sanders, a great day yesterday, seven for seven. He got to make these field goals, my dude. Quick hit pass from Parker to Tannehill, five yards. Uh, McMillan tracks Kenyon Drake down, meets him at the line of scrimmage, makes the tackle. Um, one of the writers say he it was he was like I didn't even realize Raquan McMillan was that fast. Very good to hear. It's very good to hear that he's playing with the speed. William Hayes knocks a ball down at the line of scrimmage and then they do that whole um, uh, then they do that whole game simulation. So here's a bunch of plays that happen when the game simulation. You got Osweiler bullets a pass 15 yards to Wilson. Now they're in the hurry up offense. Then Bollage drops an easy pass. Defense is holding the offense. Uh, it's now 30 seconds and the game is tied 7-7. Uh, then Deion Branch knocks the ball down at the line of scrimmage on first and 10 at the 25. And then Grant with a nice first down catch at the 15 yard line. 12, 21 seconds left in this simulation. Another Bollage drop. Um, Bollage is having a problem with his fingers. Then he makes up for, for a nice two yard, uh, for a nice catch. Then with two seconds left, they bring in Joseph. He kicks the field goal. Made it, two seconds left, essentially. Dolphins offense won this simulation. And after that, they were doing some more drills and stuff. Brock Osweiler throws an experienced pass, th you know, threads the needle, and right after that, he throws a duck. Very inconsistent from Brock Osweiler. If you want to beat out David Fales, who had a great day yesterday and had played really great in OTAs, Brock Osweiler, you gotta step your game up, um, or uh, just take the third, the third, uh, 
quarterback role. As soon as I say that, David Fales throws a pick six to the, uh, to the cornerback Calhoun. Um, it's probably one of his first bad throws of all of uh, training camp and um, the offseason. So I'm not too upset about it. And then Sitton sits out to 11 on 11 drills. Again, he's a pro bowler. He doesn't need to be in there, especially now. Um, Quinn beats Tunsil. You're going to hear this a lot for a sack. There's a five yard pass from T Tannehill to Devontae Parker. If you see me looking down a lot and you're like, what is he looking at? I got all my notes here from practice today. Uh, then McDonald breaks up a pass and then off the breakup, Shot Jones picks it off and then Dion Branch tackles Perry for a loss. Uh, then Drake, nice touchdown catch from Brock Osweiler. Um, and then Vincent Taylor with a sack. I don't know if this was on Tunsil or not. Um, and then Terrence Gavin sacks Petty. Wasn't even blocked. Just got in there and fucking destroyed Bryce Petty. Um, Kenyon Drake at one point limps off the field, goes to the sideline, but no trainers come to him or anything. He might have just like pulled something or it wasn't anything serious, so don't, don't stretch your little head. Um, Wilson, two drops today. You, you, these receivers got to catch the ball, and that was one of the downfalls for Ryan Tannehill. Um, was his receivers were dropping the ball. Um, even with Cutler, the receivers were dropping the ball. You got to catch the ball, guys. Um, Branch, the on Branch sacks fails, and then to end it all off, everyone noticed that the reserve offensive line played like caca. A lot of sacks, a lot of pressure. Um, starters played well. Tunsil did not in the uh, mini camp today. Um, but my top performers will be uh, Grant, lots of yards after catch. Um, Quinn, just completely disruptive. Has Tunsil on his ass the whole time. Um, Calhoun with that pick six. And McDonald with the tip giving Rashad Jones his pick. Then we go to the press conferences and we start off with Matt Burke. And uh, Matt Burke says that Mika Fitzpatrick is as good as advertised, and they're trying him at a bunch of different positions. Like I said yesterday, strong safety, free safety, at nickel corner, just to see where he fits and find his niche. Uh, Matt Burke says you can't tell anything about the team, and you can't tell anything about the offense and defensive linemen without pads on. So essentially, this is just them trying to get the playbook down and get used to each other. Stephon Anthony, he likes a lot. He says he's a rare, rare talent, really fast. Um, he said don't... They, they asked him about the fact that he's been running with the starters and he kind of sidestepped it. So it seems like right now the starting three linebackers are Kiko Alonso, Raquan McMillan, and Stefan Anthony. Um, okay. If Baker can't beat him out, then he can't beat him out. He said that Jalen Davis is the undrafted rookie that has been standing out the most. Um, he also said he likes the DN rotation, try to keep him fresh. Um, you always want those fresh pass rushers in there to either stop the run or get at that motherfucking quarterback. And then he, he said that uh, Quinn bends like no defensive end he ever said. And if you notice yesterday in the press conference, Ryan Tannehill said that he can get like eight inches off the ground and still has the most ridiculous speed on the turn. So that's what Matt Burke said. Now we go on to Darren Rizzi. The Darren Rizzi had issues today with the wind going left to right. Um, for me, this is left to right to you. It might be right to left, but he, that's where his issues was. He says that rookies play special teams. Um, he said, just to clarify, Raekwon McMillan's um, status with the special teams. And supposedly, he will be playing special teams this year. I don't want him to because I don't necessarily think he's a rookie, but that's what he said. And then he said uh, he noticed that Amendola was doing punt returns for New England and he said he'll be more of a situational punt returner for us, um, which he doesn't have the speed to be a punt returner. For, for me, pre prefer preferably for me, I like the punt returners to be fast, so once you break break it off, you could take it deep. But um, he said he'll be a situational punt returner. Then we got Loggins, who our offensive coordinator came in. Uh, he said he's really pre impressed with um, Amendola and Wilson. Um, he's impressed with Devontae Parker's work ethic, which, okay. Um, I'm not impressed with the fact that he doesn't take care of himself and he doesn't take care of his body because the biggest thing with him is staying healthy. He said that at the end of the year last year, Akeem Grant really was growing and was um, coming into his all. And that he said that the Quinn versus Tunsil battle and the fact that Quinn was whipping Tunsil's ass all day today will help 
uh, Laramie Tunsil grow and become a better tackle because apparently I don't know if it's because Quinn's go to Tunsil's bed again I've mentioned this before but they also don't have pads on so once training camp comes it's gonna get real interesting then Tankersley came in um, for a quick interview uh, he said he played with the starters, he also played with the reserves, he said there is an open competition with that boundary corner like I talked about in my position battle video, go check it out please. Um, and then he said Akeem Grant is one of the hardest receivers to cover because he can roll and he is super fast and shifty. And then, to speak of the devil, out came Akeem Grant for a press conference and he said uh, he came, he said he agreed with Loggins, he said he came a long way from uh, where he started, uh, he, he's learned to be more in the playbook. So he's really got the nose to the book, learning the plays. Uh, he picked Danny Amendola's brain to just get, you know, route running techniques and different techniques. Because Akeem Grant had the speed, but he didn't have the hands and the route running. Now he's starting to learn it all, so he's going to be a crazy threat for us come this season. He prides himself that pound for pound, he wants to be the toughest guy on this team. Um, which might work because he's short, so pound for pound, it would work that way. Uh, he calls Devontae Parker a beast. Devontae Parker can be a beast. He's just got to stay healthy because when that dude's healthy, he's on. And then when when they talked about the race, this keeps getting brought up. Now that more I think about it, I don't want him to race. But when they talked about the race, uh, he said that he'll do it. He's down for it. But he just ho hopes it's a sprint because he said he's not good at marathons because he has short legs. And then finally... Out came out Devontae Parker. Um, he said his biggest thing was um, staying healthy. Um, that's his biggest downfall, and the biggest critique on him is staying healthy, which I agree because, like I said before, if this dude can just stay healthy, a dynamic receiver and a seriously good deep threat because of his height and his jumping skills. Um, they asked him about the uh, Chris Chambers uh, controversy between him and Chris Chambers, and how Chris Chambers is like, he ranked him third, and he wants to give him advice on staying healthy. Um, and all he said is he does with the coaches side. I don't understand why he's getting so offended by it. Um, I grew up watching Chris Chambers. I love Chris Chambers. Take the dude's advice. He's not bashing you. He's just trying to help you, you know? But that's what happened today with mini camps and with the interviews. With the, with the mini camps, uh, the offense started off hot and then the defense just lit it up. And I'm wondering if it's back to what... Tannehill said yesterday about the heat taking over the offense at the end of the game because it was very hot today. Uh, Quinn played ridiculous. He was super disruptive. Um, Tunsil struggled really bad. So did the kicker, Joseph. Um, quarterbacks played very well for what they had to. Um, but in a whole, it was another defensive day. But again, I think once the pads come on, you might see a different blocking um, scheme and you might see blocking getting better because it's easier to grab and it's easier to block with pads on. So, hope you guys enjoyed that because now we're on to what I assume you guys like the most. Um, let me know below if you like this little segment of comment of the day. And this comment comes from Enrique Comas. I hope I said your name right. He asks, here's the ultimate question. Is this the most interesting Dolphins team you have ever seen? Is it the youth? Now, I've been a Dolphins fan, I was born in 87, uh, so I became a Dolphins fan, I've always been a Dolphins fan since I was like five, but I didn't start to watch and understand football until I was about eight. So if you take the math, it was 95 when I became a Dolphins fan and started watching Dan Marino and all that. So is this the most interesting Dolphins team I've ever seen? No, it's not. There's been other interesting teams. There's been defenses that I loved, the one with Jason Taylor, Edwala Goulier, um, Zach Thomas, Junior Seau, Patrick Sertain, Sam Madison. Like That was probably one of our best defenses in my lifetime that I just friggin' enjoyed watching. Um, with Ricky Williams on the team in his prime, when we got him from the Saints, it was, it was great. So is it the most interesting? No. Is it interesting? Yes. It's very interesting and I'm very intrigued and I'm very excited for 2018. Now, why am I intrigued and excited for 2018? Well, it's the ass end of your question. It's the youth. Um, I like the young players we have um, and I like what I'm seeing so far. Hope that answered your question. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
Let me know below if you guys want me to continue doing comments of the day. Uh, hit the like button. If this video gets 30 likes, I will continue doing comment of the day. Or, yeah, get it 30 likes and I'll continue doing comment of the day. You guys will let me know that you like me doing comment of the day and picking out your comments. Other than that, uh, the usual, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I've noticed a bunch of you guys have been following me on Twitter. Greatly appreciate it. Um, also, go check out my other channel, like I always say, youtube.com slash bitboys. If you do and you subscribe and you comment on one of the videos that you subscribed, you will get a free do uh, dolphin's wristband. I wish I was giving out dolphin wristbands, but copyright infringement. You will get a free BitBoys wristband, and I am sending them out. I got the packaging, so to you guys, you will be getting them very soon. Subscribe if you're not already. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, if you like hearing all the press conferences and mini camps because you can't see it, or you don't follow people, or you don't feel like reading it, subscribe. Uh, I will be doing other things on this channel, not only dolphin things, but right now it's pr predominantly dolphin things because that's the thing that's taking over my life right now. And yeah, hit that like button. Go follow me on Twitter. Go follow the bit boys. And uh, like usual, keep on keeping on. Vince up. No OTAs today. Mandatory mini camp started today. <laughs> what? So um, today we're gonna have, uh, I'm gonna do stuff that happened at mini camp, then I'll do the press conferences, and then I'll do comment of the day. Below I will put the time codes so you can jump to where you are interested in watching.